design process, one of the most crucial parts of setting the season up for success. Hello everyone, my name is Owen. I'm Ryan. I'm Kevin. And I'm Pavia. And today we will talk about something called the prototyping. So just for some clarification, um, me, Kavia, and Kevin are all participating in our third season this year in FRC, and this will be Ryan's second season participating this year. So, oh, um, please tell us, what exactly is prototyping? So, prototyping is a very important part of the design process and involves some concepts based on the KISS concepts, free building, cost, and time-based prototypes. Ultimately, this is the main differentiator between your season and its success or failures. at many different stages throughout the PD season. First of all, you start off with um, prototyping at the start of the season. When you kick off, you get your initial game pieces and you get initial knowledge of what's going to be on the field. Next, moving on, you use prototyping to finalize what architect you want to use, whether you want to have the same arm or slides, etc. And lastly, you use prototyping to finalize your composition design for what you're going to take. Now, talking more about how exactly prototyping gives you that competitive edge. Well, especially in the early stages, you can create as many ideas as you want. You can have ideas about how to do anything. But without actual prototyping, you'll never know if they actually work. Prototyping is essential for proof of concept. And from that proof of concept, you get iterative, iterative design. That way, you can build on your robot, make it better, and you'll end up with a great robot. All right, so let's hop into the first principles of prototyping, which is a key concept of what's called kids. This is an acronym that stands for Keep It Simple Stupid, and it's very relatively simple to understand, which basically favors simplicity over complexity and ease of, ease of use designs. But more importantly, we want to understand why we want to use these test concepts. We want to use them because it is efficient, it is cost effective, and it is reliable. We want to be able to make sure we have the most simple situation for us to use and maintain. And this robot has an arm that we wanted to use it to pick up objects from. This arm basically focuses on the basic motion of moving up and down, which explains the first concept of KISS, which is identifying core functionality. Our second step is to simplify the design of the arm, mainly to make it include one or two motors to avoid complexity in the design. Our third step is to iterate quickly and to test this arm in short cycles with some simple code. And we're able to refine and iterate on the design based on any improvements that we're able to see. And our final step is to gather feedback from these test observations and further improve the design. Now, moving on to more early stage prototyping, you have pre building. Pre building is essential when you're in that early brainstorming stage where you need that proof of concept. So, what exactly is pre building? It's when you create prototypes using only readily available materials that are just around, often repurposed. So, in FRC, for example, we use things like MDF. Uh, wood, scrap pieces of polycarbonate, scrap pieces of metal and tubing. And with this, there are many advantages. Number one, it's cost effective. When you're just taking materials that are around you, you don't have to spend that much. You can just quickly put things together and have it work. That's another thing. When you quit, you can easily put these things together because they don't require much design. It should be very simple prototypes that just test out what you want it to do. And last is flexibility and creativity. When you have something that doesn't require a whole bunch of cost or time to make, that means you can test out all the ideas that you want. And testing out all those ideas allows you to know what works best. Next, when you're creating a more structured prototype, we have cost, which is commercial office shards. And it is exactly what it sounds like. It's when you take manufactured parts from manufacturers and put them together to build your more sophisticated prototype. Now, this comes with some more designing, but it's still very time efficient and cost efficient. Because again, these manufactured parts usually aren't the most expensive compared to, let's say, all custom designed parts where you have to machine it, you have to carry it, all of that. And that's where cost of time effect also comes in. But not having to design everything and machine everything saves you a lot of time. And last comes 
the easier integration. When you have, when at this point you're building multiple subsystem prototypes. And so when you have manufactured parts that you take and just put them together, it's easier to put all these subsystems together to have a fully working robot. Next, let's talk about adjustable prototype models. These are things that you would build before your season, and they can be used to test things out even from the very first day. Uh, these can be used to test out subsystems like intakes, tutors. You can even have one for your drive train to see um, how much time it takes to get from one game element to the other on the field. This overall can really speed up your design process from day one. Furthermore, it can be used at multiple different points throughout the process. You can use it during the prep when you're initially testing out your game pieces, how they move, how they react. And it can also be used as you're trying to make new designs, as you're trying to iterate on your old designs, and as you're trying to finalize your design, finalize your designs for competition. Okay. All right, great. So uh, let's just go through some of the different types of um, pre-built models. Again, you have ones for intakes, and these would check rollers. So it could be how far apart you want your rollers, it could be what materials you want on them, your wheel spacing, how fast they go. Uh, you also could have for shooters. Um, you could check what kind of foot do I want, what kind of shape do I want on the shooter. And furthermore, you can also check um, for driving. How long does it take to get from one side of the field to the next, um, from this student player station to the place where I'm scoring. Um, and you can also determine whether you want um, for FTC, Mechanum or Omni, or if you're in FRC, Sperber Tank. Next, this is just an example um, prototype model that I created for um, an Intake Tutor prototype. This can be used to test out um, the distance between the rollers, uh, the wheel spacing, etc. And this can be powered with um, just drills. The essential part of this is um, there are instructions on the CAD that show how to build this, how it works, etc. Um, and this is really useful for testing on the first day. When you get your materials on kickoff, you want to know how do they react to um, sticking materials? Is it better to have hard wheels, softer wheels? Is it better to have them close together or far apart? Teams that are really good and can get really good designs ahead of time already know these measurements in the first few days. Um, they're not trying to figure it out after they make the robot designs. They figure out on the first day and they integrate that into their design. Uh, so this makes it so that one of your first few iterations is correct. You don't have to be scrambling around to work on the correct distance between your rollers, cloth, etc. So there are many different types of time-based prototypes. As you can see here, there are the one minute, the 10 minute, the one hour, and the one day prototypes. Now, these lengths aren't exactly accurate. It might take you five minutes, it might take you more than 10 minutes, more than an hour, or more than a day. It's just meant to guide you along these basic reference time frames. So early on the season, when you first receive your materials, we recommend using the one minute prototype. And this is really, really easy because all you do is test how the materials kind of interact with your uh, with, with your field elements and whatever you have on your workspace. So this example right here is from an FRC team this year in 2024. And this is very quick. As you can see, nothing's cut to length. It's powered by drills. And it's just meant to see how the wheel kind of interacts with these wheels. So the next one is the 10 minute prototype. Now this takes slightly longer and can test more complex things and can be used to see how these game pieces move and how field elements move in general. Now this example is also from the FRC team in this year and it's meant to see kind of how far these notes travel while they're being shot out. And this is using a horizontal setup. Now this is motors, but what we, what we recommend sometimes is to not use motors and use drills as it takes less time to accomplish that. So this is a slightly longer prototype. Um, this is a one-hour prototype. And so this is kind of where you this is the kind of level where you kind of create um, these basic prototypes in CAD. And you can test these basic subsystem designs, and they can test intake archetypes, preliminary arms, shooters, intakes, kind of any other subsystem that you want to test out early on the season. And so this example right here is from FRC Team 6328, the Candy Boy Advantage in 2023. I just want to highlight how none of the wheels are exactly the same. They're all different drawers, and the shafts aren't exactly cut to length. They're just using whatever shafts and tubing and wheels they have on site. 
So the longest one that we have over here is the one day prototype. Now this is made in CAD and it, there's also code for, for full functionality and it can be used to kind of test it in the initial subsystem design. So this example right here is from FRCT 4481. Um, there are the Rembrandts and it's from 2024. And you can, as you can see there's MBF, which Ryan actually talked about earlier. It's very easy for machining, very durable. And this is kind of uh, a quicker way of kind of put out these designs early on the season and kind of get you that competitive edge that we've all been looking for. And so overall, this is kind of what we recommend in these time-based prototypes. All right. All right, so in conclusion, we're able to visualize this prototype process in a step-by-step -step visual visualization, which includes game analysis, a prototyping and code process, as well as finalizing your design. The game analysis process can just consider of analyzing the game strategies that might come to play, as well as analyzing the game pieces and how we're less going to interact with it. The prototyping and code process mainly consists of starting your initial prototype following the KISS, COTS, and other prototype procedures that we mentioned before, as well as generating successful code to test the functionality of the initial design. And our final step is to finalize the best design that we have all came to a compromise on. And this model follows the general CAD procedures to build the final product. This concludes our presentation on how to prototype and who knows how to run if you have any questions. Thank you. And we'll take really quickly any questions from online or in person for our uh, FRC students. Any questions? All right, let's check out the online question. Uh, uh, okay, so we have like two questions from online, which is the first one being how much time do you devote to your right now? I don't care. So, as I said earlier, time is kind of subjective here. Um, it depends on what you're trying to prototype. Early on in the season, you're going to actually get all of these time based prototypes. So it kind of really depends on what you're trying to prototype out loud. So, if you're prototyping in detail and you're further along the design process, then it might take you a bit or maybe a week to get that initial design out. But if you're trying to take less time, if you're trying to just see what works and what doesn't really quickly, I would recommend doing the shorter ones, which is the one hour, the one minute, or the 10 minute prototypes. So should they be robust or something Yeah, so again, this is kind of a team decision. Um, we recommend that for anything you're unsure about, we recommend that you prototype that out. Like for example, this year, the shooting game um, in FRC 2024, um, there was insects, there were shooters, and these are all things that we wouldn't primarily be sure about before the season started. So we recommend kind of, uh, do these prototypes really early on in the season so you kind of get an idea of what works, what doesn't. So when you decide to add later on, you have an idea of kind of what works and what doesn't. What kind of CAD software uh, would you recommend? All right, so our team um, mainly uses the CAD called Blanche. It's mainly used for a bunch of FRC teams. I don't know if FRC teams like the Houston Three Safety. Um, but it's just mainly very subjective. You just find Blanche really easy to use. Okay, so some very easy uh, materials is um, actually and the act. It's really, really easy to machine, especially if you're doing the longer prototypes. Um, I, I don't know what the uh, So MDF we mainly use in a laser cutter. So hey, uh, cutting out like big plates that we used for intake, for example, this year, we first built it out of MDF for our prototypes. And so cutting out those plates yeah. took a total of about like 20 minutes total, and then the rest are just putting it all together. So MDF is really easy for FRC teams to use, but for FTC, uh, you guys have lots of resources. So we have full blown CNCs, laser cutters, but for especially for working FTC teams, given that you might not have of this, it's easier to use things. So things like wood, cardboard, any piece.
that we need to go through. Um, if you don't have a laser cutter, you can measure and make the tools as well. Really make a lot of mistakes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so when you're prototyping with each other group, you want to um, simplify the most possible. And what we mean by simplify is it's based on the team and it depends on your skill and the time you can spend. Now, obviously, teams that are really big with um, 30 plus people or for an FRC and 100 plus people, those teams can take like five to six to do that. Now, for smaller teams, rookie teams, Things such as uh, things that can be added in 10 minutes to an hour are things that you would find as simple prototypes to start off with. Again, using things like rigs that are pre-built or um, other prototypes that are being used with pods and things like that are really easy to make simple subsystems. Furthermore, if you haven't designed a subsystem before in practice, don't automatically assume that you will get it right on the first try, especially since it can be much more difficult than you expect it to be. All right, and if there are any other questions in the chat, then we can have team members like join the chat after and they'll answer your question. But for now, we are going to move on to our first question.